So, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan, and I'm kind of working as a, as a freelancer in, in the domain for embedded Linux, now just trying to focus a bit more on the, on the QA and CI pipelines. And the idea for this talk, it came, it came from the Yocto conference in Lyon, where somebody asked, well, how do, you, how do you debug these recipes? And there wasn't really a clear answer. And then when I came home after the conference, I was really motivated because I finally understood the difference between a distro and an image. So I kind of uh, patched up a proof of concept for this. And this talk is about, about this, this proof of concept for debugging, uh, the, debugging the recipes. So I generally like working with Python more than I do with Bash. I find like Bash is, you know, that, that unwanted relative that you have to see at every uh, lunch, but you're hoping that at some point he'll just go overseas and get a job. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of my relationship with, with, with Bash. Everything that's beyond 10 lines of code or, or has conditionals, I, I tend to, to go uh, with Python. And, and the thing I like uh, about Python a lot is this ability to, to inter interactively debug it. Because of what I've noticed is that it's, it's more often than not that, that I have to reverse engineer some code. And code is usually not written in a way that it's self-evident by naming what's actually going on there. So being able to be there at runtime and ex examine the objects and then like test what's going on in there is is pretty pretty valuable. I, I kind of uh, like that experience. So so I'm not going to assume that everybody has used the debugger, and I'll just slow shortly skim through the basics, the basics of it, and the kind of the the environment I usually use when I use the Python debugger. So this is just kind of a, some boilerplate code that we're going to run uh, in debug mode and, and kind of do some debug, small debug related uh, stuff. Right, so we're starting the program uh, directly into in the debugger. You can do the minus n pdb. And then what's happening here is we're just kind of trying to orientate around the code and see the variables. We're doing stuff that one would expect to do in a debugger. It's not, it, it's not diff conceptually that much different uh, compared to, to uh, GDB. GDB is maybe better in some, more powerful in, in some fields and Python debugger has some other benefits being that it's a debugger for, for uh, interpreted language. So you can step, step through the lines of code, step into the functions and just debugger stuff. Uh, right, this is just kind of a, that the format will be like that. I'll show you a screencast and then just follow up with, with the, the code that was executed there, just kind of for a... Now, PDB, it's, it's kind of good. It's, it gives you the, 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 bare, the bare working environment, but it's kind of, you know, ugly, so to say. And, and uh, I like to kind of put a layer, a layer of, you know, of, of skin on, on, top of, on top of PDB. So I usually use this uh, PDB PP, which, kind of, which is kind of a, a nicer wrapper uh, around PDB that gives you, that gives you a, a co it colors your code and it gives you some, some nicer features that, that I'll show in the screencast. One of the, the, the nicest feature I like about PDB PP is that it gives you it, it dedicates the part of the window to show you where you are at all times. So it doesn't, uh, well, I'll, I'll just show it. Simple. This is called kind of the sticky mode and it automatically dedicates this, the upper part so that you can see where you are all the time. And I'm finding this, even though it's, it's you know, if you think about it, it's kind of like, well, I can do that by just typing L and seeing the code. It's an extra step and you don't want an additional cognitive load to worry about what, when you have to build up a mental model of how somebody else's code is working. And also uh, another thing that it allows is you can, you can do edit, which allows you to edit the code while inside of the debugger. And where I use this often is, again, when, when you're reverse engineering, at some point you have to you like make notes to yourself about what you think this particular type of code is doing at that time. So I usually just use the edit to add comments uh, and then just kind of take a look at what I thought while going through a few iterations of, 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 the, of the code. Right, so uh, yeah, the source part, it shows you the function source, but that's something that PDB also, also does. All right, so far so good. That was kind of 
uh, an overview of, of Python debuggers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, create a basic a basic recipe which is going to serve as our playground for the debugging, the introduction of, of the recipe debugging. So what is going to happen here is I'm just I'm using uh, Zeus just because that was latest stable at the time and uh, then using bitbait layers to create a layer and and add a layer this will create the structure and it will also provides an example recipe that you can run now the example recipe comes with the do build task by default and i recently found got the information that the do build task doesn't get executed so i didn't dive into into the reasoning and how, how that works i just shifted to the do install and i just added the the variable so that every time so that it has to be built every time right so because once we're in a development environment it doesn't really make sense uh, to cache caching is not our friend at that particular time we want everything to execute while we're debugging the recipe so this is kind of in general what happened uh, in the <coughs> in the screencast i've here there is some extra code i'm checking out a specific commit just because later in the presentation I'm tied to some, uh, I'm tightly coupled to some uh, line numbers, but there is nothing particularly special about this particular commit. Right. And as I said, uh, the changes, I, I changed the example to do install so that it executes and then add a no stamp so it doesn't cache. All right. So what is what is kind of our goal with this, uh, with this debugging of, 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 of uh, Python tasks in recipes. The idea is to get the environment that we had in the basic example for, for, for Python debugging and to have that for the actual task. And I'm going to present this by presenting multiple approaches to this and some of these will fail but will kind of in, introduce the complexities that might arise from this approach. So the first approach will be a slightly naive one saying, hey, like bitbake, the actual executable, it's a Python script. Let me just try to run that in the debugger and step through it, guessing, you know, stepping into the functions that might eventually lead me to my recipe code. It's a kind of an academic approach, so to say, to kind of just figure out what's, what's going on. Okay, so we're starting bitbake here. And I, I kind of did this previously just to, can you see this okay? Is this? Can we maybe kill these lights also? Oh, no, that, that's that's the window. This one. This one. How many engineers does it say? Why would you join them? Here it is. Power. Opa. All right. <laughs> All right. I promise to have no more suggestions. <laughs> Can I try again? Did somebody set it initially? We saw the lab probably. We didn't break it. Give it a just going. Who turned this on in the first place? We will. Yeah. Can you uh, zoom in a little? I mean, it's in the browser. Can you zoom in? Uh, first F11. F11. I am. I mean, I am zooming in, but it's. I am. I am zooming in, but but it's not. It's not. Can you switch to full screen? I can't. 
Oh yeah, all right. I'll, I'll, I can't restart the, 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 the then I can't restart the, okay, so how about an, an analog solution, right? I'm guessing the first row sees it correctly, and the analog solution is you can just come and up front if you want to, yeah. All right, okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's get back. So as I said, we're going to try to take the naive approach by just stepping, stepping through bit bake until we come to an interesting part of the code. Right, so this was kind of a trial and error. I was just, okay, look, bit bake main, that's probably something important. I'll step into that. And, uh, and then in bit bake main, digging around a bit, if I can find something that might resemble my code, still nothing, but then I encountered, okay, well, set up bit bake, whatever. Okay, so again, this is nothing particularly special that you should remember. It's just a path that will lead to a uh, finding. All right, and then I encountered this BitBake server. So, okay, so it seems like BitBake is spinning a server. That makes sense. Let's try. Maybe I can find my recipe somewhere in that server. And then, uh-oh, create daemon. That doesn't look good. But, you know, let's have faith. And eventually, eventually, the OS fork uh, comes and, and, you know, kind of things, everything kind of breaks breaks loose. Because what, what happened is we, we just... We copied the entire process that was having a debugger, uh, and now we have two processes with debuggers fighting for the same terminal, and that that doesn't really result in a in a useful terminal. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of this is this is what happened. The control Ds and control Cs are just an attempt to kind of get out get out of the terminal. Uh, I will I will make a little a little digression with the NSRS part. It's kind of just a, a Python debugging. Tip. Right, so the aftermath of, of the OS fork is you have to somehow have to get out of the debugger. You have now two processes that are consuming the same terminal. Depending on the way, depending on, the, on all the things you pressed uh, while you were trying to kind of get a, a working environment again, you might end up with a terminal that's messed up. So you might have to fix that. And a good practice would be to kind of check that no demons are running after you kind of corruptly broke the state. In, I haven't seen this happen for, for BitBake, so it, it seems that the server kind of gracefully dies even if you try to do weird stuff. Uh, right, now a short digression for the, the, the kind of NSRS uh, stuff. In, in this process of stepping through BitBake, there was a, there was a, a multi-line function that was kind of a function composition of multiple functions. What does that mean? Uh, I'll, I'll switch back to the screencast, but it means that this is, kind of, again, just a boilerplate example. So take a look at uh, the call where we're calling uh, fun final, right? So the arguments for final are the returns for function A and function B. Now, this is nothing, nothing particularly new. It's just uh, not intuitive how do you step into function final here. And this is where the NSRS kind of part uh, will help us. It's just it's just a key combination, right? So we're we're gonna execute this this particular uh, program. So the idea is to go to the furthest line of the outer function, and then there is no avoiding stepping in the stepping in function B. We have to return from it, and then again step into it. And now the non-intuitive part is that you have to you usually kind of see something, uh, you see your current line and you step into the thing that's on, in the current line. But here, the non-intuitive part is that you have to, you have to kind of step into the return. And that's, I kind of, it's again, it's not, it's nothing complicated. It's just something that you don't want to have to figure out while you're doing something else. All right. So that was the, the first approach, kind of that failed because failed because uh, of the OS fork. And now you can say, well, you know, the the executing the debugger with minus m pdb. That's like that you, you see that in the beginner tutorial for the, the, how to use the debugger. But usually the, the errors that you want to debug they're located somewhere deep in the code, and you just uh, kind of set a trace in the recipe, and that gets executed there. Now I am starting to find some some new uh, usages for for the actual python mpdb for example you don't have to edit the code you can dynamically set dynamically set the breakpoints but yeah usually like 
I usually end up using PDB set trace just in the code because it's more straightforward and kind of easier to bring people uh, to to this uh, approach. So so let's try to let's try to do that, right? We have a recipe. We're gonna say that we don't really care how our recipe get ends up getting executed. We just want to have the 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 debugging terminal the debugging kind of prompt for our particular recipe. So here what was going to happen is everything is the same, the code is the same. We're just importing PDB and saying PDB set trace in the Python task of our recipe. But it's it's failing, right? And uh, and the reason why it's failing when I when I was first when I was first doing this, my kind of I made a bet with myself, and I I thought that it was not going to fail. I thought it was just going to break. Is it just going to block? Because so we we saw that there is some forking happening in Bitbake, and it's probably safe to assume that that's not the only forking given that when you run bitbake you see all those tasks executed in parallel and it's python so it's probably some multi-processing or additional forking happening and what those what those uh, what those processes do when they end up uh, being created they usually get they, they get detached from from this particular terminal. So, and detaching from a terminal, it means that, that their standard error input and output, they get, uh, they get, well, let's just say that they get pointed toward another another uh, direction. They, they, they point to another file descriptor. It's, it's this this system called, called uh, dupe or dupe2 that I don't know too much about, but kind of conceptually, what it means that if you were to find yourself in a program that has been duped, whose standard uh, whose standard output has been duped to dev null, say, if you from from that program you are now executing a print statement, it will end up in dev null. That's kind of that that's kind of the, the gist the gist of the problem. So I was expecting this this particular uh, uh, thing not to not to fail, but to kind of block because okay we have a. Uh, 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 debugging prompt somewhere, but there's just no way to reach it. It seems that the debugger somehow detected that this is not working, and it throws uh, an error. All right, so so we need we need a, we have we kind of define the problem, right? We need a way to to drill a channel into into the debugging into into the recipe code while it's uh, executing. And the idea uh, for this is to expose the debugger through some other means. And there are multiple options available. Conceptually, they all work more or less the same. They, they seem to open a, they open a, 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 they start a telnet server and allow you to kind of uh, connect externally to it. And through that telnet server, they expose the terminal. It's kind of like it's it's similar to like SSHing to but inside the code, right? It, it, the, conceptually, it's using the the, the the pseudo terminal approach, but I, I will not go uh, deep into that. I usually stick to EPDB with combination with PDB PP, just because it seems the most stable and it has the most. Uh, it, it's closest to the uh, to the look and feel you would get as if you were debugging the boilerplate code. RPDB seems a bit old, and Python Remote PDB it. It's uh, on purpose limited in scope, so some things don't work there and then never will, things like autocomplete. Uh, there have also been uh, kind of Yocto attempts to do this, but it, it's, there's a class created that, that just spins uh, RPDB, but I, I haven't seen it used very much and it seems to be kind of a personal, a personal project. So I'll be relying uh, on EPDB and PDBPP for the rest for the rest of the, the presentation. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We're going to set up a remote breakpoint in the code. And uh, so the one that will sp spin up a server and kind of allow us to dig a channel and connect to the running code. Then we're going to kick a build that will block on that particular task. And we'll have to open another terminal window and connect to that task uh, from, from from the second terminal. 
So now we have to be we, we have to start working with, with two terminals. We're setting the import EPDB serve, which does the, the, the which does the serving basically, and then do install. It's kind of it's taking its time. It's blocked because now that debugging server is waiting for someone to connect to it. And in the in the lower terminal, we can just execute a small Python code snippet. And once that happened, we end up in the code in a fairly similar environment as if we were debugging the, the boilerplate code from the beginning. Right, so we have we have the, the kind of the terminal prompt, and we can see this is our this is the code that we saw in the recipe. So this was just kind of a a, a basic example. I'm going to expand that a little bit with why I found this particularly useful. This is the code that was ran. So yeah, so there is just the, the EPDB serve instead of set trace that does all the, the, the kind of the server kickoff and, and then you use in the other terminal, you just import it and connect. What I what I particularly like about what, what this offers me is, is the ability to, to expand on, on the bit bake variables. Right, so for example, I've noticed that in that environment there is this uh, object called D, and that, that seems to be a, a, an object that contains everything. And in, in that, in, 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 in there, there are these uh, methods, get var, get var and expand, and they allow you to actually, you know, switch from a variable name to the actual path. And I, I kind of I like this because uh, getting I, I I'm not at home with all the bit bake with all the with all the variables that, that, that exist not just in bit bake but also also in the layers the documentation is pretty good but uh, this ability to kind of check them out while reverse engineering where something is actually ending up <coughs> that's that's basically what I found what I find very useful uh, in this approach you can take an extra step. And say, okay, I don't want to call D expand. I'll just make an uh, alias in my in my debugger, so that I have some keywords that will automatically just uh, do the expansion for me. That's just kind of a, a little bit of, of sugar coding, sugar coding the the approach. All right. So this was this is what what was executed in the video. In case you, you haven't seen the first, the L is just is just to show the source, and the D expand and the D get var are are the, the methods kind of that I that I was talking about and the further steps they're just kind of making making it easier to use to use this uh, this code all right so that was just that, no we were, we were doing an example with actual with an actual BB recipe but if you know if you inherit some kind of layer in in from somebody who like in the, in the new company that you're coming it's probably you know, they probably have things in BB appends. And the problem is that this approach so far does not work with BB appends. And I'm not particularly sure why. So I'd like to kind of raise a question here in the, to maybe help me with conceptual ideas how to find a workaround for it. So, so what happens with BB append? Oh, I'll just I'll explain this before showing it. Well, I'm going to create a uh, a BB append for an OS release uh, recipe from the from the rest from the metal layer, and this is just a basic recipe, and it has it has some kind of Python Python code for do compile, and I'm going to prepend that, and in my prepend in the BB append, I'm going to have this this print breakpoint print right. So that's that's the idea. I would what I was supposed to what I what I was hoping to see was that okay I'm gonna see a print in the bit bake execution then I'm going to connect to this particular line of code and I was I was kind of hopeful back then maybe the do compile maybe after the BB plane I'll be able to list the rest of the do compile because I, I was I was superficially digging in the code of bit bake that actually does this and I saw that when when bit bake is getting the code of the recipe that code starts as as a string and then it gets compiled into an executable code so i was 
hoping that maybe the do compile will end up a big batch of do compile with prepended and appended uh, code all the same thing that I can step through. <laughs> Unfortunately, that didn't that didn't turn out to be the case. In the upcoming screencast, I'll show you what's happening, and I'm I'm open for comments on on what is actually happening here and how to how to overcome this. Oh, where is it? Here it is. All right, so we're we're the upper screen is going to be uh, where we're just going to call a bit bake, and on the on the screen below we're we're going to try to enter the debugger. So as I said, we're doing we're we're BB appending with print breakpoint print. So and then we're we're connecting to that to that breakpoint, and that's all. The breakpoint is in BB append. It's not in the original recipe. However, looking at where the server actually is, it seems to end up in a fairly arbitrary uh, line in the actual recipe. And taking a next step from there results in both prints from, from the BB append. Uh, that, that, uh, so so I'll, just, I'll just go through this once, once again, so just to show, just to show what's happening. So we created the BB append. It has print, breakpoint, print. We would expect to end up on that line for the breakpoint and to see a print and then to kind of after the breakpoint, the next step should be the second print. And we end up in this in this kind of uh, uh, strange, strange BB place. Anyways. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will not spend much time on this. So that was the general idea was it doesn't work with BB append. If somebody has ideas how to help, please grab me for suggestions or just comment after the, the presentation. All right. So, so in terms of, of uh, conclusion, it seems that it is possible to get to debug Python tasks in recipes. <laughs> what I'm finding it, the mo I'm finding it the most useful for, for expanding uh, the variables. And that's, that's kind of where I have been who been using it. The BB append part, it's it's not good. I can I can imagine myself, you know, being stressed at some point and just saying, damn it, this BB append is not working. I'll just copy the core layer and, and just put it in my layer and I can debug that. And that's you know not a good practice because it should be BB appended. So I'd like to conclude with a question if you what how do you approach your kind of uh, debugging of, of recipes and, and development, especially the Python ones, would you find something like this uh, useful? And I was thinking about if if this is something that's useful, maybe where would it live? Would it become a part of, uh, I don't know, dev tool so that you kind of add a flag and it automatically starts the debugger in the same terminal for that particular recipe. So you don't have to worry about changing the code and adding uh, additional working with multiple terminals and yeah, stuff like that. All right, that was it for me. Thanks. Any mm. questions? So, Alrighty. does no? doing this help you understand more about how BitBake itself works? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could. But that, that's not the... That was not your point. Well, I, I, I tried to take that path, but it became too complicated too quickly. Okay. Right? I was thinking of, hey, let me step, let me actually start the presentation, but like, let's try to introduce stuff by making the whole, like the bare hello world for BitBake. But it was just, it was just, the amount of, of new, new stuff was just too much too, too, too quickly. I can imagine it being a good, a good start. I would approach it, I would approach it like that. Say, hey, you know, because it's even simpler for, for, for BitBake. Mm -hmm. But that, that the initial goal is kind of to reverse engineer inherited recipes. I mean, you're trying to make it easier to debug recipes when they go wrong. Or yeah, or even or even develop them. No, I, I was I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if I had this, this kind of uh, the, the the debugging terminal ready, and that I can even not just not just if, if I could access the documentation for variables in the debugger itself. You know, so that you know, because it's it's a small step, but it's an extra step to kind of go to the PDF and search and you know, la la. So for me, this is primarily of reverse engineering and kind of developing developing new recipes. 
All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks.